We should know that the customer's servers are down before they do. Yeah, but I don't care. If we need to replace our monitoring system, then do it. I don't want this to happen again. All right, guys, put your hands up if you've been in this situation before. I think it's safe to say that we need to change this monitoring solution and address John's concerns. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you today the sponsor of this video, Manage Engine's Site 24 by 7. If you want to follow along with me today, then you're in luck. Not only is this platform easy to use, but they also offer a 30 day free trial. Now, I don't want to waste any more time and I don't want to receive another nasty phone call from John. So let's jump straight in. The first thing that we're going to want to do is go to site24x7.com. Once you're there, click on that start 30 day free trial. In here, enter in an email address and a password to create your account. You can then opt in to receiving marketing material from Zoho and its partners. And lastly, accept the terms of service and the privacy policy. And then just go ahead and click sign up. Once the sign up is completed, you'll be taken straight into the site 24 by seven portal. You'll also receive an email that looks something like this. And that's just simply to verify your email address. Now, the first bit of infrastructure that we're gonna be setting monitoring up on is VMware vSphere. So we'll go ahead and click on VMware on the left-hand side. Now, the way that this works is that Site24 by seven have all their servers up in the cloud. So we're simply gonna be installing a Polar on a Windows VM within our environment. That Polar is gonna be responsible for collecting the metrics from our vSphere environment and uploading them into the site 24 by seven servers. From there, we'll be able to read all the metrics and information in this portal right here. Next, I'll click on the 64 bit button to download the Windows OS Polar. Underneath that, you're gonna see a show device key. That device key is responsible for connecting your Polar to your site 24 by seven account. When we run through the installation of the Polar, you are gonna enter in that device key. I'm gonna switch over to the Windows VM and you can probably see on the desktop that I've already downloaded the Polar installer. I'm gonna double click on that. And in the first welcome screen, we'll just go ahead and click next. For the license agreement, we'll go ahead and click on yes. And here we need to go back to the portal, get our device key and enter it in right here. Once you've entered the key in, then go ahead and click next. We'll go ahead and click on next for the destination location. And if you use a proxy to connect to the internet, you can go ahead and tick this box. Otherwise, just go ahead and click next. And this is the final screen, so we'll just go ahead and click next to complete the installation. The installation is now complete, so we'll just click that finish button. And up on screen, you're presented with a readme file for the Polar. Now we're just going to go into the services and just make sure that our 24 by 7 service has started. You can see on screen here that my service is not started, so I'm going to go ahead, right click and click start. Once the service is started, we'll then go back to our site 24 by 7 portal. And here the portal is checking that it can communicate successfully with the Polar. Once the Polar successfully connects, it will tell you up on screen here. Select the Polar and then click Next. Now it's time to add in your vCenter. Click on Add vCenter. Here I'm going to enter in my vCenter name, which is VM vCenter. And then on the next field, I'm going to enter in my fully qualified domain name. So that's going to be vmvcenter.vmlab.local. Under VMware User Credentials, let's hit that plus button. These credentials are going to be used by the Site24 by 7 Polar to connect into your vCenter server. Once it connects into the vCenter server, it's gonna be able to read the inventory and also gather all the metrics that it needs. I've already created a user account in my vCenter. The user account is site24x7 at vSphere.local. That account has read-only permissions from the vCenter and to all the child objects underneath it. Now that we've got our user credentials sorted, we're gonna leave the rest as default for now and let's scroll down to the bottom and hit that save button. Now that our vCenter is added in, we just need to give it a couple of minutes to go through and start polling and collecting the data. As you can see up on screen, it is gonna poll every 15 minutes. So we might just pause the video, let it collect the data and come back shortly. Well, I did say that we'd come back shortly, but actually it's been two days. The system has now grabbed enough information so that I can give you guys a really good demonstration. Now, as it stands, we have monitoring set up. We'll already be receiving alerts whenever a monitor goes down. Up on screen behind me here, we have a list of all the monitors that vCenter has discovered. So these include virtual machines, data stores, ESXi hosts, clusters, and even resource pools. The monitors marked in blue here are actually virtual machines that are powered off. 
If we scroll down, we get to the virtual machines that are powered on marked in green. Let's click on one of the virtual machines and actually let's click on that site 24 by seven polar. In the first screen here, we have a monitor overview. And this simply shows the availability, CPU and memory on that first ribbon. If we want some more data, we can scroll down. For space metrics, we do need to wait seven days for it to start generating the graph here. So we'll continue on down. Here we have a snapshot of the CPU, memory, the disk usage in kilobits per second is only used for ESXi hosts. So we don't see anything there. And then lastly, we have the network usage. At the very bottom, we have some more VM details and then also some details of the ESXi host. If we click on the CPU tab at the top, we'll see a summary up the top with some CPU metrics. And then if we scroll down, we can see a few historical graphs here with CPU ready, CPU utilization and CPU weight. Let's go and check out the memory tab. Very similar with the CPU metrics, we have a summary at the top. And then if we scroll down, we have some memory historical graphs that we can view right here. Let's go ahead and click on processes. Now to view the processes within the virtual machine, we do need to go and install an agent. We're gonna be doing that later on in this video. So let's go on to the next one of Disk.io. Disk.io is really only for ESXi hosts, so we won't see any of those graphs here. However, we will see some space consumption. So let's scroll down and have a look. On the left side, we can see the free space view. And then on the right side, we have a nice space split up summary. Let's go ahead and click on network. Once again, we're given a summary at the top of the screen there with some network information. And if we scroll down, once again, we have the historical information on data received and transmit. And then we have packets received and packet transmitted as well. Let's go click that data store tab. Here is the data store where this virtual machine lives. And in this screen, we're shown a summary of the data store performance. Next up is Zia Forecast. This is a pretty cool forecasting tool, but unfortunately I won't be able to show you this as it does need to be collecting data for the last 15 days. If you wanna read up a little bit more on this forecasting tool, then check the video description. I'll be posting links there to the documentation. Let's check out outages. Outages is gonna keep a record of if the monitor goes down, and if it is down, how long is it down for? If we click on more, and then we'll go and click on inventory, we're able to see a little bit more information on our virtual machine. Plus we have some site 24 by seven profiles that we can modify. And we're gonna to get to that real soon. If we click on more once again and select log report, this is basically a CPU and memory log report taken at those 15 minute polling intervals. Now let's go over and click on home on the left hand side. We're gonna scroll back down to that site 24 by seven VM. And this time on the right hand side next to those three lines, we're gonna click on that and we're gonna select edit. Now remember not too long ago, we did talk about profiles. I'm gonna scroll down to configuration profiles and next to threshold and availability, we have a default threshold, which is called VMware VM. I'm gonna click on the little pencil here to modify that. And this is the area where we can configure thresholds for certain metrics. Out of the box, we are notified for agent failures and we're also notified if a NIC gets disconnected. But more importantly, down the bottom, we do have CPU utilization and memory utilization thresholds that we can set right here. For example, on the CPU utilization, I may wanna set 85% here. And this is gonna be like a warning notification that comes through. If we wanna have a critical notification come through, we're gonna click on add critical threshold. We'll put in our threshold of say 95%. And you can see under the notify as column, we have the notification as critical. If we want, we can do something very similar for memory utilization. But if we scroll all the way to the bottom where it says set threshold values, if we click on that, we have a whole list of metrics here that we can add in and set our thresholds on. For example, we can select snapshot size that will get added to the list and we can place a threshold of say one gigabyte. And if the snapshot size reaches one gigabyte in size, we are gonna receive a trouble notification or a warning notification. If I click on add critical threshold, the exact same logic applies to the notification we set on the CPU utilization. I might set here two gigabytes and when the snapshot reaches two gigabytes in size, we'll receive a critical notification. Once you're done with that, down the bottom of the page, we just click on that save button. One other feature that I wanna mention here is the IT automation template. Let's have a quick look at that by clicking on select automation and then going down to add automation templates. You can see right here on screen that one of the options for automation is a REST API. You have a bunch of options here that are available to you, but if REST API is not your thing, then we can drop down this menu and we can also select a service script. The script language that the system understands, 
is a batch script, PowerShell and a VB script. Going back up to the type field and dropping down the menu once again, we also have an option to select a server command, Windows service, or we can just do a server reboot. A very simple example of this IT automation could be that a virtual machine gets powered off and then IT automation kicks in, triggers a script and powers that virtual machine back on again. We're gonna close out of this window. On that simple example that I gave on IT automation, not only can we trigger that automation when a virtual machine goes down, but if we drop down this menu right here, we do have a whole bunch of other options. So you may select IT automation to kick in when you receive a critical alert or a warning alert, for example. And you've got a few other options up on screen here. One of the last sections that I wanna cover up in this screen is the notification profile. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little pencil here to modify the default notification. I'm gonna highlight a few important options here on this screen. The first one being that the system sends a root cause analysis whenever the monitor is down. And the root cause analysis alert looks something like this. Scrolling down to alert configuration. Now we're gonna receive an alert anytime that a monitor is either in a down state, up, critical, or in a trouble state. And moving over to alerting period, if we drop down this menu, by default, we are gonna be receiving this alert 24 hours a day. However, as you can see on screen, we can modify those hours. So you may do something like for critical, we do wanna set that for all hours. And then for trouble tickets, we may only wanna receive that during work hours. Under notification medium, if we drop down this menu, the options selected are email, mobile push notification, and SMS. We only have email set up at this point, but you can see the other options there that are available to you. Let's scroll down to notification delay. Now, whenever the monitor is in either a down state, critical, or in a trouble state, then there'll be a notification delay set by this option right here. We drop down this menu. We can either notify immediately or notify after two, three, four, or five consecutive failures. To the right of that, we've got the alerting period. And similar to before, we have by default all hours, but you can cut that down and select other options right here. Persistent alert is gonna keep alerting you until you actually come in and acknowledge the alarm. We can fine tune that by using that notify after every field. We then have the option to select a user alert group. And lastly, the notification medium. By default here, we have email. If we scroll down to escalation settings, let's say that you've received an alert and that alert hasn't cleared after 30 minutes. Here we can say escalate after 30 minutes and we can notify a different group. So that group might be a manager or might be a group of more senior engineers. And to the right of that, you have your notification medium, let's say email. And then just under that, you can also trigger IT automation. Once you've made all your changes here, click that save button and click the save button again at the top of the screen here. Now those profiles are applied on every single VM. So you can imagine the amount of time that saves by using this method. You definitely don't wanna go and touch each virtual machine and change thresholds and all this kind of thing. You wanna have a good baseline threshold and then apply that to the majority of your systems. Now we're gonna move on from VMware vSphere and we're gonna connect in a physical Cisco switch to our monitoring system. Before we add in the switch, we do need to add in the network module onto our site 24 by seven polar. And to do that, we're gonna click on admin on the left-hand side and then we're gonna click on on-premise polar. On the right-hand side, under the network module column, I'm gonna click on that enable network module. The download is initiated. You can now see that under the network module column, it has a status of up, so we can now proceed. On the left-hand side, let's go and click on network. We'll then go and expand network monitoring basic overview, and we'll click on switch. Make sure that you have your site 24 by seven polar selected, and just go and click next. By default, we have an SNMP v1 slash v2 community string here of public. For the demonstration purposes, I'm gonna be using this community string in my lab. However, for a production environment, please do not use public because it's used absolutely everywhere. Even better still, if you wanna use SNMP v3, we can simply go and click on add new credential. And right here, you can add in your SNMP v3 information. Whatever option you've selected, make sure you have clicked on the little box next to it and go ahead and click on next. I'm only gonna be adding in a single switch here. However, if you want it to go out and probe your network, you can select that add network option. I'm gonna be selecting add device. So I'll go ahead and select that. For display name, I'm gonna add in Cisco underscore switch. We're gonna drop down this category option. 
and we'll simply select switches. For device template, my switch is a Cisco 3750. So I'm gonna drop that down in the search field. I'm gonna just type in 3750 and I'll select Cisco Catalyst 3750 series. There's nothing else that I need to change here. So I'm gonna go ahead, click next. Here we can modify some filters. We go and click on the little pencil under the actions column. You can see by default, we're only gonna be discovering interfaces that are in the up state. If you also wanna discover interfaces that are in the down state, you can simply drop down the menu and also select down. I'm gonna exit out of this filter and we'll go ahead and click next. Here we have a summary with all of our settings. If you're happy with this, we'll go ahead and click on discover. Now we need to give the Polo a little bit of time to go out and discover the switch and also start to gather some of those metrics. So we'll pause the video right here once again and we'll come back shortly. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It's been a couple of minutes since the poll has gone out, discovered our switch and gathered a few metrics. On screen, you can see my device name called Cisco underscore switch. Let's go ahead and click on that. In our first tab, we're gonna see an overview of device performance. You can see things such as availability, response time, packet loss, CPU utilization and memory utilization. Right down the bottom of the page, you also have a little summary of some device information. If we go ahead and click on stack, if your switch has stacking capabilities, the information for that is gonna show up right here. Let's move on to interfaces. Here we have a list of interfaces on our switch, along with a snapshot of metrics such as performance, errors, and discards. If we wanna set some threshold alerts, we can go ahead and click on that threshold configuration button. We're gonna be setting a bulk threshold on every single interface here. The first thing we'll do is hit that child monitors drop down menu, and I'm gonna click on select all. And as you can see up on screen, I have configured a threshold of 70% on my receive and transmit utilization. And on 70%, the system is gonna send me a trouble alert. I've also added in a critical threshold of 90% for my receive and transmit utilization. When the interface reaches 90%, the system is gonna fire off a critical alarm. Once you've set up your thresholds, go ahead and click the save button. Let's move on to the traps menu. Here, we're able to set our Cisco switch to send SNMP traps to our site 24 by seven monitoring. Once a trap fires off, it will be received right here. Let's move on to performance counters. Up on screen, we have some default performance counters for our switch. If we wanna add in some additional counters, we can go ahead and click on add performance counters. And we have quite a large list of performance counters that we can add in here. I won't be adding any at this time, so I'm gonna close this window. Once again here, we can set up some alerts for thresholds of these performance counters. To do that, we can click on that threshold configuration button. And similar to before, we go ahead and we drop down the child monitors. I'm gonna select switch CPU. And if the switch reaches 70%, I want it to fire off a trouble alarm. And in addition to that, if the switch reaches 90% of CPU, then I want it to send me a critical alarm. Once you have your threshold set up, go ahead and click save. Let's go to tabular performance counters. A great example and use case of this is if you're monitoring the temperature of your switch. You'll probably find that there's a few SNMP OIDs that are able to monitor certain components of the switch and display the temperature. Now, instead of having each of those components displayed up on screen here, we just have one performance counter saying temperature of switch, and then underneath that we'll have each OID. If you wanna see what this looks like, then have a look at this example up on screen. This is taken from the site 24 by seven knowledge base, and it looks at multicast packets and interface collisions for each interface. We spoke about Zia forecast with our VMware vSphere monitoring, just a reminder, check those links in the video description below if you wanna read up a little bit more about Zia Forecast. Under more, if we go and click on outages, similar to VMware vSphere, this is gonna list any outages in the last 24 hours. If you wanna change that time frame, on the right hand side, you can click on the drop down menu and you have a list of options there. Let's select inventory. Here we have a little bit of information about our switch, along with all the profiles that are attached to our switch. Again, you can go and click on the modify button next to any of those profiles and you can tune them to your liking. And last but not least, we have our log report. And here is a log report with an entry for each of those polling intervals. And we can see some basic information here, such as response time, packet loss, CPU utilization, and memory utilization. Now we're gonna move on to the last bit of our demonstration, which is gonna be setting up an agent within a Windows OS and monitoring the virtual machine from within the operating system. 
let's go ahead and click on the home button. Now what I'm gonna do is search for one of my domain controllers. In the search field up here, I'm gonna be typing in VLAB ADC1 and then just clicking on that object once it appears. I'm then gonna go across to the processes tab and we're gonna click on that download agent. Now the way that this works is that we download this agent, we install it in the operating system and that agent talks directly to the site 24 by seven cloud. So it does not go through that site 24 by seven polar. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on download agent. I'm then gonna select windows and in step one, we'll go ahead and click download site 24 by seven Windows server agent. Scroll down to the bottom for the license agreement and select I accept. Now you guys know how to install this agent. So I'm gonna skip ahead and stop at two screens that I just wanna highlight. And the first screen being our device key. Similar to when we installed the Polar, we do need to go back to site 24 by seven, get our device key and paste it in here. In site 24 by seven, this is where you get your device key. You're gonna copy that and you're gonna paste it in here. The next screen being the server monitor settings. Here we can disable such things as IT automation, plugin monitor and management actions. By default, disable IT automation is selected. You need to determine which settings are right for your environment. Once you have those selected, then go ahead and complete the agent installation. Now, not only is this agent gonna pick up operating system metrics, but it's also gonna detect that it is a domain controller and it's gonna be able to obtain domain controller metrics as well. On top of that, it's also gonna be able to determine Windows updates. So you're gonna be able to get alarms if your server requires any Windows updates. If we go back to site 24 by seven and search on that server's host name, you'll see that at the moment, we only see the VMware VM. We need to give it some time to gather the metrics and report back up to site 24 by seven so that it's gonna be available in the portal for you. Now, in the interest of time, we are gonna go and have a look at a different server that I have performed this exact process on, and it has already been gathering data and metrics and all this kind of good stuff, and we'll be able to see all that in the portal. The name of that server is called VMAD. So I'm gonna type that up in the search box now. Sorry, the server is actually called VMAD2. But what you can see up on screen here is not only the VMware VM, but you also see a monitor for AD server, and then you see one for Windows Update. First up, let's go and take a look at the AD server one. Now, once again, very similar layout to what we saw in our Windows VM and also in our Cisco switch. However, we just got some metrics here, which are specific for Active Directory. Some things to highlight here, up on that top ribbon, we can see the replication inbound bytes and replication outbound bytes. And this, we're talking about Active Directory replication. In the middle section there on the left-hand side, we can see some interesting statistics for our Active Directory domain. We can see user, computer, and group counts. And lastly, the organization counts. On the right-hand side, we see some core services for Active Directory, and good to see that they're all green. If we scroll down, we have some metrics here along with historical graph data for Kerberos and for LDAP. If we continue scrolling down further, we have even more metrics here for Active Directory. Let's go ahead and click on the replication tab. Right here, we have a whole heap of metrics zoning right into that Active Directory replication performance. Let's go ahead and click on domain services. We have some performance data at this point in time. We also have that historical graph of domain service operations in the middle there. And I'll scroll down to the bottom just so you can see that last one, which is on search operations. Let's go up and click on that LDAP tab. The LDAP tab is pretty cool because not only can we see that historical graph there, but we also have some metrics with average, minimum, and maximum. And I'll just scroll down to the bottom so you can see the last bit of this page, which is LDAP operations and successful binds. Next, we'll click on security account manager. Now you can see that my Active Directory is not that busy, but on this page, we can see machine creations and user creations. As an Active Directory admin, these type of metrics can be really useful for administering your domain. Let's go across to databases. Here we have the metrics on our Active Directory database. We have cache size, we have IO log writes, we've got reads and writes, waiting records and threads. We've got average IO log writes and average IO database reads. So plenty of information to keep an eye on your Active Directory database. Let's go ahead and click on outages. Just like our VMware vSphere and our Cisco switch, we have a list of outages here if they occur. And on the right hand side, we can drop that menu down and select a different time frame if we wish. Let's go ahead and click on inventory. Here we have some basic information on our server and we also have our profiles that are attached here. 
Once again, we can go and click on the little pencil to modify them and you can change them to suit your environment. They are for threshold and availability and also for notifications. Let's go ahead and click on log report. Like with our other environments, a basic log report here, taking at those folding intervals and we can see replication outbound bytes, inbound bytes and address book client sessions. Now we're gonna take a look at the Windows Update Monitor for this server. In the search bar at the top, I'm gonna to type in VM82 and I'm gonna select that first one that says Windows Update. Now this one's really useful because you're gonna be able to keep track of Windows updates throughout your environment. And anytime that a Windows update comes out and your system's not patched, you'll be receiving an alert that looks something like this. Now this first page is pretty self-explanatory, but what I wanna show you is on the left-hand side, if we click on total pending updates, that number five there, we have a list of the updates that are missing from this server. And further to that, on the right hand side, we can click the KB link, just like this, and it takes us to the Microsoft support site that tells us all about this update. Another really cool feature here is if we click on the update history, and just like that, we can see a list of all the update history here. Now outages, inventory, and log report, I'm gonna skip because we have covered that in VMware vSphere and in the Cisco switch section. And now I wanna move our focus across to dashboards. On the left-hand side, let's go ahead and click on dashboards. Now within dashboards, we can go and create our own custom dashboards here by selecting build a custom dashboard. On the left-hand side, we'll leave performance widgets, monitor, and all monitors selected. Where it says data store, I'm gonna drop that down and I'm gonna select Microsoft Active Directory. For choose monitor, I'm gonna drop that down and I'm just gonna select VM82. However, you can select all of them as well. And then for graphs, I'm gonna be selecting Kerberos and NTLM authentications. So I simply just drag that onto the middle of the screen here. And here's my graph. So I can just click on done customizing and there's my dashboard. So it's as simple as that. Within 30 seconds, you can have your own dashboard up and running. If I go back to dashboards and scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says system dashboards, we have some predefined dashboards already created for us. I want to just show you the VMware Health dashboard. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. We have a list of top 10 heavy hitting vSphere monitors right here. So this covers almost every aspect that you need to know about VMware vSphere. In this list, we have clusters, we have ESXi hosts, we have virtual machines, resource pools, we have data stores, and lastly, we have those dreaded snapshots. One thing missing in here is networking, but that can be easily resolved by creating a custom dashboard. Now, before we wrap up this video, there's one last section that I wanna cover, and that is user accounts. On the left-hand side, let's go click settings, and we're gonna click on user and alert management. At the moment, I have a single user here, which is my super admin account. Let's go ahead and click on that add user button. The top half of this, we can add in the user details, but what I wanna really highlight here is the allowed to access. So by default, it's allowed access to all monitors. However, we can select monitor group. And if I drop down that menu and in the search, I'm gonna type in customer. So what this means is that this system not only caters for single company use, but you can also open this up for MSPs and service providers. By using monitor groups here, we can ensure that this user can only access the monitors that it needs to see. For example, if it belongs to customer A, then this user can only see the customer A monitors. We can also associate this user to a user alert group, and the alert groups that are available to you out of the box are admin group, application team, and network team. And this is an excellent example of where we can use escalations. If this member is part of a senior admins group, and we have an escalation going to that admin group, then this user will receive that alert. We can also expand alert settings at the bottom and we can tune this specifically for this user. Once you've got all your settings right, go ahead, click save. Now, if you are serious about monitoring your infrastructure, I highly recommend that you consider Site24 by 7. Not only because they sponsored this video, but you saw over the last 30 minutes how easy it is to deploy and get running within your environment. Therefore, today, we're gonna to be rating Site24 by 7, nine sysadmins out of 10. The other reason for such a high score was that I was able to deploy Site24 by 7, get it up and running, view all the metrics, receive alerts, without much interaction with the knowledge base or with a user guide. And that's extremely important because from a company's point of view, they do not wanna be spending large amount of dollars on operating expenses. 
Let us know in the comments below if you're already running Site24 by 7 and what your experience is with this platform. Also feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions at all. Now if you're a VMware engineer and you haven't checked out vSphere 8 yet, why not have a look at these two videos, installing vCenter and ESXi 8. That's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again in the next video.